mode. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day at Aceware headquarters in Kansas today. You see that cabin in the lower left corner there? That's our office. And you see these windows right here? Those are the windows you see right behind me. And Chuck, he's with us. Say hello, Chuck. Nope, didn't hear you, but he's saying hello over here. He's here with me, and he's going to be fielding the questions you have today as they come up. And we have a lot of the Aceware team with us today. So if you can, we have Lindsay, I think, and Joe, and let me look here, and Jason. Mike, we have a lot of the team with us today, and they're behind the scenes here. But I'd let you know that right now, gosh, the temperature is about 80 degrees. And we'll be in the lower 90s today by the end of the day with a humidity about 70%. So it's going to feel a little bit steamy by the time I get home tonight. Give us a shout out. Use the question in the chat box in your webinar panel to let us know where you are and what the weather's looking like in your area as we get things started today. I'll be watching for your comments here. Um, in Savannah, I noticed that it would have been a bit cooler than we are here on the prairie. They'd have highs in the lower 80s and a lower humidity. Can you imagine that? Let's see. Chuck, are you seeing any responses for temperatures and things? Let's see. In Alabama, they're saying it's overcast but nice. Hot and humid in Omaha. Lancaster County, about 68. We have customers from right here in Manhattan with us. Welcome, welcome, everyone. We're glad you're with us. It would have been a great day to visit the city market. You see that image on the lower right in Savannah? One of the many stops I'd have been making is to the Birds Cookie Company and perhaps even Wolfgang Bakery for my fur babies and, of course, the Georgia Tasting Room. But since we can't be uh, with you to go to the market, we are going to bring you a little bit of Savannah City Market. So one lucky winner today from those in our audience will be taking home a sampler packet of cookies. It will be delivered right to your home office. And Susan's going to be doing that drawing for us while Michael chats with us today. All right, let's take a look at the schedule today. Um, in just a moment, Michael's going to be with us, and he'll demonstrate registration tools. This was at your request. And after lunch, we'll have some Brittany from Auburn University at Montgomery. She'll talk to us about Pocket Ledger. And then to end the day, we have Jonathan, who's going to go over how they use course packaging. So that you can look forward to through the morning. And all of these sessions are going to be recorded. And as soon as Lindsay and I are able to get that done, we'll be posting those to the conference site. I want to show you what that's going to look like on the conference site. Let me swing my screen over here. Should be seeing that. My team will let me know if they're not seeing that. But yep, yep, yep. what you'll see is the registration link is going to be replaced with the view recording. So you'll be able to take a look at that recording and once we get all of these done, I'm going to have a special landing page that's just for all of the conference sessions. So look forward to that a little bit. Let me get rid of this screen so I can get back to the PowerPoint for you. All right, just a quick look at who all we have with us. Um, the attendance has gone up to about 125. So we have lots of folks with us today. And I see here, you can see that we made this map directly from Student Manager. So if you have a question about that and how that was made, let me know and we can bring that up in tomorrow's session when we have an open forum. So let me see. I think I've covered all our housekeeping notes. I hope you've had the opportunity to download Michael's outline and PowerPoint deck from the website or the handouts that I have here on the panel. So with that, I'm going to bring up uh, Michael's session. He's going to be talking to you about registration tips and tricks. He's got a lot of good information. He's been with us for 21 years. And in addition to providing tech support to many of you out there, he also tests student manager and he works on AceWeb Extreme Makeovers. For those of you that don't know what that is, that is applying your web design to the ACE web pages that you have. 
And he also serves as the Aceware Grill Master on occasion when we have some company cookouts. So, Michael, I am going to turn these to turn the controls over to you so you can tell us all your tips and tricks about registration, and I'm going to go off webcam. So it's all yours. Good morning, everyone. I really wish that we'd be doing this face-to-face -face in Savannah. Uh, been there a couple times and really would have enjoyed going back, but in lieu of everything that's been going on, being safe is probably the best. I'm going to jump off this slide because I don't need to see my face anymore. But we're going to be talking about registration tips and tricks. And the agenda for today is going to talk about the Mass Register tool. The Mass Register tool and the next item, Mass Transfer Registrations, are different. One is you want to take everybody in one course and register them in another course. Another one, the other one is take everyone from one class and transfer them into another class. Next up, we got speed registration, uh, and we'll get into the specifics of that. But with speed registration, I'll also touch briefly on the brief name entry. Uh, moving on, we got grouping registration, the purpose for that and how to do that. Going on, we have proxy registration. Uh, express registration, and lastly, we'll talk about escrow. So jumping right into this, and Sharon, I don't, I, I'm getting a lot of feedback. If you're wanting to say something, that's fine. You can. Okay, I'm I'm going off so that see if that stops. Ashley, let me know if when I go uh, mute, that helps out, please. Okay, so jumping back into this, the Mass Register tool allows you to register everyone that's already enrolled in one course and move them to another course. Now, we talk about doing things in a mass level. There are some setbacks, and I'll talk about those as we go along. But this talks about if everyone is enrolled in a beginning type class and say the class is becoming close to the end and then there is an intermediate or an advanced class and, and everybody has said, I want to move from one to the you know, move on, you can mass register everybody that was in one into the other. And if I can, Sharon, I think you're moving your mouse and I'm trying to click and nothing's happening. There we go. Okay, so you open the course screen that you want to take everyone from. So you do have to have the courses already built in the system. Uh, of course, you're going to already have the one that everyone's enrolled in, but the one that they're going to be moved into, you also have to have that course built into the system to make this possible. But you open the class that you or course that you want to take everyone from and mass register register them into, and there's a button in the upper right, right underneath, add edit Reggie's, and it's called mass register. When you click that, it's going to pull up a preview of classes, and you can just find the class that you want, and you can select it. And moving on, so uh, you select the appropriate option for the mass register screen. Uh, you have a number of options. Now, one of the setbacks to this is everyone that you mass register will get the same fee. You can it's a it's a one for all, so you cannot change. Uh, by saying five people get this fee, five people get that fee. This is going to do everyone. You can also pick and choose the, the CEUs and the hours and credits are brought from the course screen. Uh, the status of registrant, tracking code, the reg code, those other fields that you can set up on the register screen, some of them are uh, defined by you, uh, can be relabeled by you like the t-shirt and status. Those are fields that can be relabeled and that would show up here. So what we have from our demo may not be what you normally would see, but that's what will appear on this screen. Then when you click OK, you get a list of the current registration registrants in the course A. And you can deselect. So if, if you don't want everyone, if you have a list and, and say in this case there's eight people, and you say out of those eight people, there were a couple that don't want to move on or they didn't have a passing uh, grade where they have to do a retake, you can just simply uncheck their names and click done. When you click done, it, it confirms the registrations that you're going to move. This one says you're going to do eight, but if you'd unchecked a couple of names, it would say six and so forth. Um, 
next up it's going to say how do you want these people to um do you want them to be billed or just to be owing you money uh, you can build a firm if they have a firm associated with their names you can build the individuals or you can simply say no if you don't do billing um, this does nothing with payments at this point so you're just trying to get everybody from course a registered into course b and then you can deal with payments after that this is just a mass way of getting their rear ends in the seat and you'll hear me say that a few times during this session Next up, we have the mass transfer registration tool. Now, the purpose for mass transfer registration tool, I mean, there's many reasons for it, but uh, most commonly is you cancel course A or you're going to cancel course A and everybody that's in course B or course A, you want to move them into course B. Uh, say there was bad weather, say that there was low enrollment, and because the enrollment isn't high enough, you have it going on in the next semester or later in the day or another time that's more popular, you want to transfer everybody from that course into the new course. What you'll do is you'll go to Module, Courses, and Mass Registration Transfer. That's just an option under uh, Module and Courses. It brings you up a screen like this, and it kind of walks you through it where you can type in the course number that you want, or you can click the three little bo uh, button ellipses over here and have a pop-up that will look for the courses uh, in your course table. You can double click on it and it will throw that course number right into the starting, the, the course number area right here. And then it'll tell you how many registrations there are. Then you can put in the actual course number you want to transfer them into. Again, the course must be already in the system. You can't be trying to create a course from this point. Uh, again, you have the three little ellipses button that you can click on and find the course, or you can just simply type it in. Now, you can include canceled registrations. You can include waitlisted registrations if you want to. These are all options. One of the other uh, benefits to this is if you have a number of people waitlisted on course A and you have the next session that's going to go on and you want to only take the waitlisted registrations and you want to register them into the new course, you can only take the waitlisted registrations if you want to, leaving the live registrations alone and all well and good. Now the message for the registration that goes in the registration note on the registration screen, this is a pre-populated text. You can add in or change what you want to have in this area. You could take it out or append on to the end of it. Most importantly, we usually put things that are of importance in red. So you'll notice the big red warning message that says you need to be making a backup before you use this tool. And when you click continue, it's actually going to say, and I'm trying to click OK to move on. OK, the next thing it's going to ask is, did you make a current backup, yes or no? So if you say no, it's, it's going to stop what it's doing. But if it says yes, it's going to continue on. Some of you may be saying, well, what if the new course already has registrations in it and the maximum is going to be set? Within Student Manager, we leave the power to you to set a maximum for the course, but we also leave the power to you that when that maximum is met and you have people that are wanting to enroll, now online they can't do this, this is strictly within Student Manager, you have the power to overbook a course. So with this, you're gonna be going over the max. You'll notice the maximum message and you're gonna be going over by two. And this is saying, do you want to allow that? And you can say, okay, and it'll add all those registrations in but you'll be two over the maximum number. So again, that's, that's, we leave the power up to you, and if you allow for it, you can overbook a class. However, online, they would never be allowed to do that. So if you want to transfer, uh, you do get a list of the names. You can then look at the list of names, uncheck mark the names that you don't want to mass transfer, leave them all if you want to, and click done. We do have a select and deselect all down here if it makes it easier for you. Sometimes your courses are you know, over 50, and, and that's just a lot of scrolling to go through. And if you want them all, take them all. Then when you say OK, it's then going to uh, say again, you're going to transfer three registrations from this course to this course, is that okay? 
please make sure just by double checking your own work that the course number they're going from and going to is correct at this point. You don't wanna say yes at this point and then just briefly be looking at that and say, oh wait, that's not what I wanted. Um, the system will ask you uh, to transfer the registrations and you can say yes. When you say yes, everybody has moved into the new course they're, if they're transferred, their payments go along with them. Everything's transferred straight across the board. Next up, we have speed registration tool. We have a way in the system to do speed registration. With speed registration, set back to that is you're not doing anything with payments. At this point, you have a list of names. You want to get them into the, the course or courses and it's doing it individually. So the last one was mass transfer and mass um, take everybody from one course and put them in the next one. This is you're gonna be finding a name, finding a course, hitting enter, they're in the course, finding a name, hitting enter, or finding the course, hitting enter, they're in the course. This is repetitive work if you have a list and it's supposed to be done for speed. So with speed, not gonna have anything to do with money. First thing you need to do is you go to module, registrations and speed registration entry. Once you do the speed registration entry, it's gonna have a pop-up for looking up courses, a course lookup. You start typing, it starts finding, and you find the course that you want and you can double click on it. When you do, you get a screen that looks like this or a screen that is this. And going over that, you have how you can look up the actual name. Now you have multiple ways. You can look them up by ID number field which back in the old days housed their SSN. Uh, you could do the name find entry, which is most common, or you could do an, an ad name. Now the ad name I'll get into here in just a second, but the ad name is the brief name entry screen and I will show you that. But on this screen, it populates the course, begin date, days of the week, subject matter, how many are enrolled and the maximum. You can even do a quick view of the student list. But down here is the stuff that you'd be filling out if you uh, want to. The tracking code, the status, registration code. The fee is the important part. Before with the mass transfer um, or mass register, you everybody got the same fee. This one you can have a select dropdown. By default, it'll bring the first default fee from the course fees tab. And you can it pre-populates from what the course you set for the CEUs, hours, credits, and grade. It'll also ask you if you want to create a, create a group. And if you do want to create a group, that is up to you. And if you don't know what grouping is, we're going to be going over that further on down here in this session. Without further ado, you can click uh, add name or you can click on find name. And what you will see is this, uh, the find name, when you click add name, it pops open and a find window where you can start typing and it is a begins with. You don't have to type in the entire name. You'll notice the example has HAV uh, space CH. So that's everything up to for the last name space and then start typing for the first name and it finds Charles Havlicek. If that's the name you want, you can highlight it and hit enter. You can also, if it's not in this database, that you can't find it, you can actually hit escape on the find window and what you will get is the brief name screen. Now the brief name screen, you'll notice on, when our name screen has the tabs at the top for the main, the demographics, the additional information and cred credentials and all that stuff. This one's just the brief one, it's all condensed, got their mailing contact information, source code, occupation, organization, things that, well, really you all de deemed relevant uh, over the years, because as you know, and I'll, I'll plug this, I haven't heard it plugged, but I'll, I'll plug this, that almost 95% of the changes that happen in Student Manager are customer driven. So if you have a recommendation, if you have a suggestion, don't be shy and let your technician know what you'd like to see and if it's possible, we'll let you know. If it's already in the system, we'll let you know. And if it's something that we may think about in the future for the better of the good, we'll definitely add it to the wish list. But this brief name entry has come a long way in 21 years. In 21 years, this just used to be 
name and mailing information only, contact information. This information over here was not there. It was very brief. You guys wanted more, we added more. So when you fill that out, click OK, and then they're added to the course. Once they're added to that course, you're put back to that same uh, speed entry option where you can either look up another name and continue finding another class to register someone into, register the same person in another course, and so on. And until you hit escape on that window, it's going to leave you in that uh, loop, if you will. Once you're on that screen and you say, you know what, I'm done uh, with the speed registration, I don't have any more, just hit escape and it takes you back to the main student manager screen. Next up we got, uh, well actually let me pause there, are there any questions that I need to answer at this point? Mike, no, we're good, you're doing a good job, so carry on, so. Okay. All right, well, moving along, we have grouping registrations. Now, the grouping registration is a very cool tool to use if you're not using it. Uh, I'm hoping that somebody in this group today has, every time I do a session, every time I go to a conference, what I look for in the group, and usually I can see it, and I can't see any of your faces, so I can't see you have this. I look for an aha moment. Uh, I want you guys to have an aha moment where you say, I didn't know it could do that. I've been wondering if it could do that, or that's so cool, I wanted something like that, and, and I'm hoping that grouping is, is one of those moments for you. The purpose for grouping is to do group registrations together so that you can put one payment on that group and it splits it apart to everybody in that group. So you have a number of people coming from the same firm, one person has a chat firm, or the person coming has the company credit card, and you want to put them all on one card, one fail swoop, one transaction, boom, this is what you need grouping registration for. It also will put everybody on one receipt all together. So grouping registrations, if it lets me click, is a preference. So you have to actually uh, turn on the preference if you want to use this option. On the preferences, you go to preference and the register tab and basically right in the middle of the screen is prompt for grouping. Now this is a user specific preference. So if you have your own preferences set, Susie down the hall and Joseph down the hall, one can be using it, one cannot. But if one's using it and the other one says, hey, how come I don't get it? It's because their preference may not be set. And you just simply go in and check it and there you go. When you're grouping, um, you can register someone for a course, and when you register that same person or someone else, so you don't have to register individuals in a course, you can register the same name in multiple courses, group them all together, so um, let's say Sharon is looking to register into four courses at one time, pay for them in one fell swoop. She can do that and group her registrations together. And the flip side of that is Sharon wants to register for a class, but she also wants to register the rest of the ACE for staff in classes. She can do that all in one fell swoop, grouping them all together for one payment. Once you register Sharon in one class and you go to add her into another class or someone else, it will then ask you, do you want to group them together, yes or no? And it's just that simple. You can say yes. And when you have all the uh, registrations in a group and you'll want to make sure that you have everybody in the group before you make the, get the payment because the purpose for the grouping is for you to have easy access with a payment being split apart to everyone in the group. Once you have that, then you go into one registration. Now, uh, let me tell you a little trick here is if someone in the group is the payer, you want to make them the last person that you register and have on the group. Because when you go into the payment screen to add the payment, everybody knows when you add the payment, the payment detail is for the registration that you're sitting on. And if the individual that you've registered last is the actual payer, well, you've saved yourself some time. It doesn't, it's not uh, set in stone that you have to do that. You can always then go find the person in the group that's the payer, enter on that name or that registration, then go into payments. It just saves you a couple steps. That's just a little uh, tidbit to maybe help you. But 
if all the registrations are being paid by the firm, it doesn't matter which one you do it on. Anybody in the group, you go into payments and on that pay record, and I think it's next up, but you go to that pay record and you create the payment and notice Sharon Brookshire is the payer on this one. So she would have been the last person I added to the group, just went into payments, clicked on check, boom, her stuff's in, uh, entered there. But you can always click on paid by firm, which is an option and it would populate that. Now, once you've put the payment amount and the payment type, it chooses for the, the entire group. And once you've saved that, it splits apart the payment to everyone in the group. Now, you're maybe asking yourself, what if it's not the entire payment? What if they paid for six individuals, but seven individuals are registered, but they're gonna send a separate check later on? Well, you'll, you have an option if you, Put the payment amount that's less than the group total due or yeah less than the group total due it'll ask you how you want to distribute the funds and you have a number of options there one is to pay off uh, as many as you can and leaving the last one with uh, an amount due split it equally across everybody so you do have options if the payment is not in full but everyone will get the payment and everybody will get the same receipt number so the receipt is actually the same. And when you actually print the receipt for the group, it will show that Sharon Brookshire registers, someone registered her and grouped her into two courses, shows the fees, shows the payment, shows the total due, shows the balance due, and boom, you're ready to go. Now, when you wanna view a grouped registration, on the registration screen in the upper right is a button called Show Group. You can click on that show group, and for whatever reason, our screen capture doesn't really match the lookup down here because it says three are in the group, but there's only two. You can highlight which one you want to actually, the registration you want to look at, hit enter, and it'll show you that registration. So it can jump you in between people in the group or registrations in the group. Now you can group existing registrations, so you don't have to do anything with money at first when you're trying to get everybody's registrations grouped together. So if a firm calls up and says, well, I have 10 people that I'm gonna be sending, and right now I have a list of five and I'm gonna have another list of five, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna register those five, grouping them together, and then when you get the next set of five, you will then continue registering them, but then you can simply click mark that grouped button that I just showed you, and I'll ask you if you want to link it to another group and you can say yes. When it says, when you say yes, it'll pop open a find screen and it will show registrations for the last 30 days. Now, why 30 days? Well, because that's a preference. Down here on the register tab where I just showed you the prompt for grouping, lower and to the left is show groupings for the last 30 days. Now that may be a lot for you, it may not be enough for you, but we leave that option for you to decide. Now that is an actual preference that's in blue. So whoever sets it, it's going to be effective for everyone. So make sure that everyone in your organization is happy with your choice. Um, and it'll show for whatever time period you ask for at this time. Okay, voiding invoices. Jumping on to something different. Uh, when it comes to invoices, sometimes invoices, uh, People may have made mistakes, and we all know that when you wanna avoid a payment, you have to go to the register, find the name, go to the registration, click into payments, and you would void the, the problem payment. In, and when I say payment, in student manager world, you know, so in our world, an invoice is a payment. Now, I know some of you may be saying, no, it isn't. Um, to you, no, it's not, but in, in our world, it is. When you create a payment and you make it a billing payment, that is an, an invoice, so in, in essence, it is in the payment table as an invoice, so you have to kind of wrap your mind around that. But if there's a problem or if you had an issue or in the case of what we just had for the grouping registration, say you group those five together, you created an invoice, you submitted a bill, and then they called up and said, well, we got five more, so can we get an invoice with all 10? Well, we can't create, we can't add those other five onto the existing invoice because it's already been created, so you need to void it. Simple way to do that is under tools and financials, we have void receipt invoice. You enter the invoice number that you want to void, 
and you could put a reason for voiding. Please put a reason for voiding. Documentation is great when you, you have to have uh, backup for what you've done. You click on preview and boom, it voids that, that invoice where then you can go back to someone on that group and you can process another invoice slash billing for that group or individual, however you've worked it, worded it before. So now we want to talk about ungrouping registrations. Say you have a list and for whatever reason, uh, before the firm said they were sending 10 and when you look at that grouping it says 11 and you just cannot figure it out and you look it up and you say well someone made a mistake or I made a mistake that I added someone that should not have been in there so what you'll want to do is you can go to the registration anybody that's in the group and you can find the registration that you want to remove from the group once you do that you can actually uncheck that group box and it'll actually say you have options. Remove this record from the current group or group this registration with another group. Group the entire group with another registration or selectively ungroup uh, people that are in the group to remove from the group. The, the options are there and they're there for you. Normally people are gonna say remove this record from the current group and voila, it does it. It then makes it its own registration with no grouping at all. Next up, we have proxy registration. Now, proxy registration is awesome, uh, especially for people that have uh, youth camps, youth uh, classes. Locally, I have a customer that does a lot of swim classes and give a shout out to UFM here in town. They do a lot for the community with community classes, but they deal a lot with uh, children. So dealing with that, you're, you know that the child isn't going to be enrolling online and enrolling themselves in the swim class. So in our example, mom has three children that she wants to enroll and pay for. First off, with AceWeb, you have to enable proxy registration. It's either enabled or not. So it's an INI setting, and if you don't know about your INIs or you don't know where your INIs reside, then definitely get with your technician to find out either where those are, how to access those, but this has to be enabled for you to be able to proxy. The way you can tell if it is, is when you go to a course that you want to enroll someone for online, the button is will be at the bottom for enroll someone else or enroll yourself or enroll someone else. You must be logged on in AceWeb for you to be able to enroll someone else. So you must actually, the, um, excuse me, the registrant must have their own record before they can enroll someone else. So mom has to already be in the system and she can enroll someone else. When she does that, she's given the option of entering the email address of someone that uh, she wants to enroll. It will either look up to see if she's enrolled that person before. Now notice the right here is this person has already re or has enrolled someone else before and they have a list and they can select the name that they want to enroll in the course. If they put an email address and the email address is not found, or if it is found, excuse me, first screen first, uh, you can actually choose the name or you click a new name record. You're probably asking yourself, can that be possible? Yes. People on AceWeb can ha share the same email address. Uh, in our example, a mom enrolling three children, well, the kids may be too young to have an email address, so mom's going to use her own. Well, what's makes, what makes them distinctive? The password. They must all have a unique password to be set apart separately from one another in AceWeb seeing in the lookup. If they all share the same password, it's not going to work properly. They must have a unique password. So if it's a new name, if Charles and Barb are not the ones you want and you want to add a new name record, you can click add a new name record. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, you can click the name and then you can put in the information. It will put the, the mailing address of the individual that you're starting from. So if I started with Chuck Havlicek, it would bring in the information for his mailing address that I have here. I could just simply add a new first name, last name. I could change anything that I want. It just pre-populates the field as needed. Um, once you select someone, you can then confirm and continue. 
Now, it doesn't mean you have to stop there. Like we said, if there is a mother trying to enroll three kids, she, of course, is not enrolling herself at all. She's signed in and she's clicking, finding a class and she's clicking enroll someone else. And she can continue uh, registering and just keeps on adding to the cart. Now, the more people that you're adding to the cart, what it's going to end up looking like is this. When you're checking out, Cheryl Scott is enrolled in Little Campers and Sharon Brookshire is enrolled in ACE Club membership. There's a total amount due, total amount paid. Now at this time you can delete registrations uh, that you find that may have been a mistake. But if you wanna process, what this will do is it will group those registrations together that we just showed in Student Manager so that there is one payment. Then they can proceed. They can either be billed or they can make a credit card payment. Again, those are I and I settings. If you allow for billing, for the course if you do you can if you can uh, otherwise they have to pay by credit card and it splits that payment apart once they're enrolled and grouped down in the bottom uh, right hand corner of the registration screen it will show who registered that person so Charles Havlicek actually enrolled those two registrations in there and next time he tried to go out online and enroll someone else anybody that he's registered before is already pre-populated in the list of who he's registered before. Give a little brief uh, stop there. Are there any questions popping up yet? Mike, we do Mike. have a question that uh, dates back to the mass transfer uh, or mass register. And the question was, uh, do you need to have everyone out of student manager to do that? And um, we'll answer that. I don't think so. I think that is something you can um, uh, do without having that be single user. So yeah, no problem with uh, multiple users. So, and I, uh, I, I agree with would, Chuck on that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that should get us up to date then. So oh, uh, the other one, and I there was a question about brief uh, name entry that there wasn't a interest code spot on that brief name entry and. Uh, wanted to confirm with folks that if you put a subject code in the course, uh, that subject code will be stamped to the interest code of somebody that you're adding through brief name entry. Again, just like a regular registration where the course subject code gets stamped into the name interest code. So it will automatically do that. So, so I think those are the two that kind of bring us up to date. So. Okay, well, moving along, we are going to move into Express Registration. Express Registration is a feature for your online registration. Um, unbeknownst to you or known to you, you already have an example template in your ACEWeb. When you bought ACEWeb, when ACEWeb was installed, when ACEWeb was put in, you have a custom directory where all your other HTMLs reside. And, and I may be speaking French to you right now, but where all those other HTMLs reside in that custom directory, is an express registration form that you can start with. So if you look at the example, if you go look at um, our help guide on where to begin, where it's gonna tell you to begin is to look at that example that we give that you already have. Uh, an express registration, what it is, is a one-page registration form for someone to sign in or sign up for a particular course with fees, workshops, whatever, on one page. That way they don't have to sign in on ACEWeb or sign up on ACEWeb, then go find the course they want, uh, select the fees they want, move on to the enrollment cart, and then pay for that course. This is an express registration, everything all in one page for you to register for one course. Now, the setback to that is you may have heard me say you're registering for one course. That's what express registration is. You set this up so that everybody has a link that when they click on for that course, it'll say, hey, are you already a, a, a user in our database? If so, what's your username and password? If they are, they put it in and it pre-populates all the stuff that they would have filled out if they said, no, I'm not a, a member or a customer at all. So they'd have to fill out their name information. You. You may say, well, what fields do they have to fill out, Mike? Well, that's a great question. The fields they have to fill out is determined by you. There are the, the email and password fields that they need to fill out, but what else is, is up to you? 
It could be the same as what they have on their personal data page where they, their actual sign up page. But this is course specific, so it would be, you know, information on the course after the name information. So it would show the course date, times, uh, and then it would get into workshops if there are any workshops, additional fees if there are any additional fees, all in one fail swoop at the bottom. You click on uh, process and you're paying for that course right then and there unless you are allowing for billing. If you're allowing for billing, there'd be another button there that says bill me and, and you get the options for what's going to be on the bill. But again, it's on one page, quick and easy. Um, I have a number of customers of mine using this and one of my biggest clients that uses this, I don't know if they're in attendance, but Auburn University uses express registration like it's going out of style. So they, they love it. Uh, if you have questions that I can't answer that you wanna hear from a customer side, I could give you someone to contact that uses this a lot, is proficient in this and get you guys in the hands of someone if from the technical side I can't help or your technician can't help. Moving along, escrow. Back in student manager, we talked about escrow yesterday with Ace Web, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit more in depth because escrow has to do with within student manager. So what is escrow? Escrow is someone is canceling or getting themselves out of a class and they've already paid for it but they don't want a refund. They want to leave the money with you so that they can have it as money on file. So credit on file for them to use down the road at some other date and time. What will happen is when you cancel a registration and there is money on file, it's going to say, hey, what do you want to do with that money? And you can transfer that payment to escrow, in essence, making them an escrow account so that later on, it'll show that this individual has money on file. They register the next time and it'll say, hey, this individual uh, has $395 that you can put towards the next course if you want to, and you can choose to do that or not. When you transfer the money from escrow it, or to escrow, it puts it in there and on their name screen, it should show that they have money on file or credit, money on credit, and when they, when someone else registers them down the road. So it doesn't have to be you, say you've moved on or say you've moved up and you have another worker or coworker that's now doing the registrations. They go into payments and it's gonna say, hey, it's actually gonna be a pop-up like this one. Notice that this individual has $395 on escrow. If you wanna use that, click the escrow pay button. On the right-hand side, um, excuse me, right, left, center. The left-hand side of the payment screen under the payment type is a button that says escrow pay. If the course is equal to or more than what they have in escrow pay, you can click on escrow pay and it'll move the entire funds from one to the other. If the course is less than, it will move just what is needed. One of the great things about escrow is the money has already been accounted for. It's already in your bank account. So when you use escrow pay, that escrow pay money will not. So if I did it today, that escrow pay money would not show on my today's balance sheet because I already ac accounted for that money a month or so ago when I took the money in. So that's the good thing is the money has already been accounted for. It's not going to be reaccounted for again when you use escrow pay. The payment date that when you took the payment remains the same. Um, so here's how you do that. When you click on refund wizard on the payment screen, there's an option to whoop, refund to escrow. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble seeing the screen, but it's I, I've been here for long enough. I know what I'm doing. So I can refund to escrow. I can do the entire amount. I can do a certain amount of it if you guys keep a little bit. So I know every organization is different. When someone cancels a class and wants to keep the money, it probably all has to do with timing for you guys. But if you keep 10%, if you keep $10, that's up to you. Uh, but then you want to cancel the current registration. Mike, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I was yeah, trying my best trying, trying to my... look at the screen, but hang on just a sec. Okay. All right. So 
again, it's it's up to you and, and more importantly, your organization, when someone cancels a registration, what happens with the, the money? Do you have to refund if they can leave it on file? Do you have do you keep a little bit for whatever reason reason maybe they canceled within out of your cancellation policy? And you can choose those. That's why we give you the option. But cancel the recurrent registration, zero out the CEUs. You have to give a refund description. It's always nice if you give a registration note, but uh, not necessary. And then you can process the refund. And then you have the escrow account. And with that, you guys probably heard yesterday and probably had a lot of hoops and hollers over this, but the escrow online. Currently, students can see that they have credit on file on ACEWEB. That's in the, in the ACEWEB that we have out right now. Can they do anything with it? No, they can't unless they call you. In the near future, what they'll be able to do is to be able to use that escrow money, and that was mentioned yesterday. That's one of the big things with ACEWEB, so that's something that's coming out. Currently, all of, Anybody with ACEWEB that's up to date on uh, ACEWEB will see, as a student logging in, will see, hey, they have $395 on credit. If they want to use that credit, they got to contact the office. Otherwise, they can use a credit card or other means to do that. In the future, they'll be given the, the options that, you, that you've seen below and that you heard talked about before. And it was talked about yesterday, so we won't go over it again. And with that, I believe it's time for questions, if there are any. Um, we do have a question on, uh, Jessica was asking, what would be the benefits of using express registration for an ACEWEB class rather than standard? Do you want to share some thoughts on that? Sure. Um, when it comes to like a, a one-page fill-out form, a lot of the times, one of the other th things that we offer, but it, it costs, is called Quick Pick. Now, Quick Pick is a one-page stop where you can sign in, sign up, pick a bunch of classes all on one page. It's all well and good, but it, it of course, is an optional module that costs. This is one that it's a one-page shop for the class where they sign up or sign in or sign up with the class information, fees, workshops, everything is on one page. Now, who does this benefit? It usually benefits for kids camps um, and OLLI programs. OLLI programs, uh, a lot of my OLLI programs use the Quick Pick program, but before the Quick Pick was uh, even uh, in conception, we had express registration, which is what they would use. It's just easier, it's one page, that someone can look at because a lot of people where they have to go from filling out a name of information, some people find it kind of frustrating where they find a class they want, they click on enroll, but they haven't signed in yet. So then they have to sign in or sign up. So they're jumping screens. And some people just don't like the jumping screens. So the express registration is one screen and it just makes it more clean and cut. And that's why people like it. Yeah, I'll add to that, Mike, that again, if you're doing one-time events or conferences where you wouldn't necessarily think that the student would be enrolling in multiple classes, you know, where they'd want to add to a shopping cart, um, that's another um, example, I think, that folks are using that. So, um, the, the, right. the, And last, with express registration, the other thing you can do is you can give it a, a – a different header and footer if you want to. So you can make it stand apart. So if you have a firm that says, hey, I want to use uh, one of your training rooms, but I don't really want it affiliated with markings from your school. I want it to have our logo and really only people from our site are going to be registering. So we want it to kind of have our own look and feel. You can offer that and have it have that same look and feel. Very good. All righty. Um, one last question uh, from Rachel about escrow, and it says, does escrow look different on a student's account than credits that were not equal or cleared? So, um, oh, on course transfers. So uh, we may need to check on that. Um, trying to think. I think, I, and kind of going with you on the answer, I think an escrow is a specific uh, credit on a escrow registration, so it would uh, it should show differently. I, I guess we'd need to we need to follow up with Rachel on that. So 
Um, let's see. Uh, all right. Other question is uh, unique to the client, so we'll um, we'll get back to that later. So, all right. I think that's okay. it, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, Sharon, I'll I'll turn it back over to you and and quit touching your mouse so you can take back over and finish up. We're not hearing you if if you're talking. Thanks. I said Mike and I are doing a little bit of a, a tug and pull on the controls here, but. Anyway, thanks, Mike. That was a heck of a lot of information, and everybody, this will be posted, so you can go through and look at the help guide, and you can try these things out for yourself and start the video and stop, and, you know, so you can do some practicing. That's the purpose of putting those videos out there for you. And a shout-out to Auburn University. Two shout-outs, actually. One, Kelly Davis. You will be receiving the sampler packet of cookies. You'll hear from Susan, so we can get those to your home office. And we encourage all of you to join us again at 1.30, where we will have Brittany Thomason from Auburn University at Montgomery talking about Pocket Ledger. If you think of other questions that come up, you know where to find us. Send us your questions, and we can certainly address those in tomorrow's open forum at noon or get back to you directly. So enjoy lunch, and we will see you after lunch, everybody. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye, everyone.